Seth, you're a Mormon. Uh, yes, sir. Remember My family was a Mormon growing up. Uh, to be honest, I was raised in a Mormon church. What do you mean, born again? It's interesting. Give me something to think about. So, Lua, tell me, what do you think happens when someone dies? Well, uh, to be honest, I was raised in a Mormon church, so we believe in the afterlife and uh, the three levels. My family was Mormon growing up, LDS. You're just growing up with it, you know, it's always just kind of pushed at you. Seth, you're a Mormon? Uh, yes, sir. So you haven't been born again? What do you mean, born again? Yeah, John chapter 3, Jesus said, unless someone's born again, they're not going to enter heaven. He said, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. I'm not an active Mormon, to tell you the truth, but... Uh... So what's that called? What sort of Mormon are you called, a Jack Mormon? Jack Mormon, because as you can see, I'm at the park watching my kids play basketball, but... Uh... And you're drinking... Beer, so they'd frown on that. Yeah, they would, but oh well. I'll repent later. Tell me, what do Mormons believe happens after someone dies? So our belief after someone dies is that everyone goes to this place called the spirit world and where souls go to uh, those who didn't receive the full gospel are taught it so that everyone is able to receive uh, salvation. Do you realize you've got a huge problem that you should be trying to solve? Do you know what it is? No. You're going to die one day and you don't know when it's coming. Everything in you should be searching for truth. You know, you love your life? Yeah, I like my life. Do you think you're that evil that God should give you the death sentence? No, I don't think I'm evil. Yeah. Most of us don't. That's because we make the mistake of judging ourselves by man's standard rather than God's. Are you familiar with the Ten Commandments? Yeah. How many could you name? Uh, not many. How about the ninth, you shall not lie? I've heard of that one. Have you lied? I've a couple times. <laughs> Just a couple. Are you a good person? I absolutely am. I'm going to give you a standard to judge your morality by, the biblical standard, the Ten Commandments. How many of the Ten Commandments can you name? I heard the uh-oh. <laughs> How many lies do you think you've told in your life? Oh, man. Uh, I, I think I plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> so you have lied? Of course. Have you ever stolen something? Sure, yeah. So you're a lying thief? Yeah. Let's go to the third commandment. You should not take God's name in vain. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Uh, I've said say that every day. Yeah. That's blasphemy. Do you realize that? It's not giving God's name due honor. It's letting it roll off your tongue as though it's meaningless. It's using it as a substitute for a curse word to express disgust. Very serious. Hey, I appreciate your patience with me. This is uh, putting the heat on you, but you're handling it really well. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Just my wife. <laughs> when did you last look at pornography? <laughs> no, I don't know. And sex outside of marriage? No. You're a virgin? No, I mean, I'm, I'm married to my wife. Did you have sex before you're married? Yes, we did. That's sex outside of marriage. Mm, yeah, all right. <laughs> so, I'm not judging you. You've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. Sounds about right. Yeah. So if he judges you by those Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Sounds like I'd be pretty guilty. So you've earned your wages? Yeah. So would you go to heaven or hell? Probably hell then. So does that concern you? Um, well, that's assuming that there is, is an afterlife, which I, you know, not 100% sure on that. Well, you can be. You know why? To tell me. Jesus didn't lie. Yeah. Scriptures don't lie. It's appointed a man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And the Bible incessantly talks about an afterlife, the resurrection of the dead. We're going to stand before God. Lua, I'm not trying to drive you to Mormonism because it's different from what I'm saying. Mormonism says you have to do things to merit eternal life. It says we're saved by grace after all you can do. I believe um, as I do my best and I repent of uh, my wrongdoings that uh, that I can uh, return to my Father in Heaven as, as clean as I can and it's, it's up to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ on whether the work I did here was enough. Well, how do you know if it's enough? I never know. It's That's up to Heavenly Father. That's, is that kind of scary? It is. It um, feels a little nerve-wracking to think about it. Mormonism says you have to do things to merit eternal life. It's up to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ on whether the work I did here was enough. Now tell me, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you know? He died for them. 
Suffered and died on the cross. Took upon their sins, bled from every pore, that kind of thing. Yeah. He took upon himself the sin of the world. Now most people know that. Mormonism preaches it, so does Christianity and Catholicism. But this may be the game changer for you if you can just hang on to what I'm saying and get a grip of it. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law, Jesus paid the fine. Do you remember his last words on the cross? Uh, uh, Father, ju forgive them for they know not what they do. Or That's one of the seven last sayings. Like that. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't just know. before he dismissed the spirit, he said, it is finished. Mm. Do you know why he said that? Because the plan was done, the work was done. Yeah, the debt has been paid. We broke God's law, Jesus paid the fine. If you're in court, someone pays your fine. The judge can let you go even though you're guilty. Mm -hmm. can say there's a stack of speeding fines here, but someone's paid them. You can leave. And he can do that which is legal. And God can legally let you live forever. He can grant you forgiveness of sins on the basis that Christ died for our sins, rose again on the third day. He'll impute righteousness to you in a second because of what Jesus did. That's what the Bible says. God commended his love toward us, and while we yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I know what we've talked about hasn't been comfortable for you, but I really appreciate you listening. If a patient sits and listens to a doctor talk about a terminal disease, that's not pleasant. But if he has a cure, then it becomes pleasant when he realizes there's a cure to his dilemma. And Jesus is the cure to the dilemma that you have of death. You could leave here and die. Death could seize upon you. 54 million people die every year. 54 million, a lot of young people, just aneurysm, heart attack, thought they were healthy, but he just died while playing volleyball. So what do you think about what we talked about today? Uh, I feel like it uh, started off fun and then came heavy on me. It's been as uncomfortable for me as it is for you. I can tell by your body language you weren't enjoying what I was saying. But I love you enough to tell you the truth. I care about you. You can't see that now, but I do really care. I love you, and I, even though I've just met you, and I want to tell you the truth, and I want to tell you how you can find everlasting life. So do you think about what we talked about? Yeah, I will. Seth, I'd encourage you to get before the Lord and put your trust entirely in Jesus. It's not after all you can do. It's a free gift of God. You can't earn a gift. It's like saying to someone who gives you a car, they give you a brand new Mercedes, and you say, oh, that's great. I appreciate this gift. Here's 10 cents. If they take your 10 cents, it's not a gift, it's an exchange. You've purchased, you've got a good deal. So salvation can't be purchased by anything we do. It's a free gift of God. And when you truly put your faith in Jesus alone for your salvation, you'll be born again. God will give you a new heart with new desires so you love that which is right and pure and just. I want you to think seriously about this. And what I'm trying to do is not drive you back to Mormonism because that's different from what I'm saying. Biblical Christianity says that we're saved by grace through faith. It's entirely a gift of God. It's not by grace after all you can do, as Mormonism says. Biblical Christianity says there's nothing I can do to save myself. It's a complete free gift of God because of what Jesus did on the cross. He purchased everlasting life. You can't do anything to save yourself. It's all God's amazing grace that saves us. He didn't die because the Romans took him and crucified him because the Jews pushed for it. He died because he was God's sacrifice. He was the Lamb of God that suffered and died for the sin of the world once and for all. So when I repent and trust in Him, God imputes righteousness to me. He makes me righteous. He makes me clean. So I don't have to earn God's favor. It's a free gift. It comes by God's amazing grace. Man, I appreciate you listening to me. You've been very sure. gracious. And uh, what do you think about what we talked about? Uh, I thought it was interesting. It was interesting. Give me something to think about. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you stopping by and the random act of just enlightening me on, on, on life in the gospel. I appreciate that. It's a pleasure to meet you. When I go into a men's wear store for the first time, I really appreciate it when an attendant says, if you're looking for jackets, our most popular items are on that rack over there, and they're on special at the moment. So welcome to our store. Here's some of our most popular tracks, and they're on special at the moment. We call this the Starter Kit. It's made up of 100 of each tract and 50 Ten Commandment coins. These coins are really easy to give out. Just begin with a warm good morning and then say something like, I've got a gift for you. It's a coin with the Ten Commandments on one side and the Gospel on the other. I've even tossed a handful of these on the sidewalk among teenagers as I rode by and you should have seen them fight to get one. This is the good person test in comic form. And who can resist reading a comic? Then there's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners, and these really are funny. Just say, this will lift your day. It's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners, and of course it contains the gospel. And finally, 
a super popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? People love these. Or you could just put it down somewhere, it's sure to get picked up. These 300 tracks and 50 coins would normally cost $38, but they're on special in the starter kit for just $29. Go to livingwaters.com, click on the store, and then tracks.